The lamp I'm going to make now is one that I refer to as a textured lamp and you'll see why as we go along. Um, I used to struggle to get large pieces of wood to make this because it does look rather rather good in, in, in bigger pieces of wood. However, it dawned on me finally that with the texturing you can laminate up pieces of wood and the laminations never show except on the top and the bottom. I'm just going to rough this down with you know, the grain of the wood running this way so I'm just going to rough this down with a spindle roughing gouge until I get it more or less into the round then I'm going to draw my hole and then I'm going to refine the shape from there. father's voice he would tell me to move on he would say I'll be just fine right let's drill the hole up the middle of it so again take the speed down to about 750 800 rpm song is on repeat Drinking wine until the dawn Knowing soon we'll be back home Ooh I'm thinking about you This is a Robert Sorby spiralling and texturing tool um, and they give you very clear instructions on how you should use it and I'm going to completely disregard all of them. I want to cut a pattern, it's a random pattern, the way this is presented. I'm sure somebody can work out exactly how to get specific finishes um, with this tool but uh, it's completely beyond me. I just go in there and live with what comes out the other end. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the speed down to again 800, 850 RPM. Yep, yeah, oh, that's nice. quite good. That's nice. Very nice. I think we'll live like that. Yeah, very nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of coarse sandpaper, probably about 80 grit. I'm going to knock off the worst of the lumps and then we'll get creative. The resin I'm going to use is called, it's a gel coat filler. It's a fairly fine resin, it's just a two part, um, two part resin. I get this from a place um, down in South Shields. Um, it comes, it's completely colourless and I colour it now. Up until fairly recently I used to get artist pigments from an art supply shop and just mix through whatever colours I wanted into the resin and apply that. I have over the last month started working with, um, with casting resin 
and uh, illuminate illuminate dyes, and um, and their their colours, their various pigments, their perlexes, everything mixed through this absolutely fine. So you know whatever you've got, whatever is easiest for you, use it. It's fairly bomb proof. This you don't need to worry about it too much. You can mix virtually anything through. If it's suitable for any other resin, you can mix it into this. And it'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. Mixing sticks, um, you can buy them online. Um, if you're lucky, they will be supplied in bulk from your local coffee shops. Um, it's entirely <laughs> up to you. I'm just going to take a. And I always mix up far too much of this stuff. <clears throat> but I don't want to be going back and trying to match the colour, so it's probably best. That's more than it. That's that's more than enough there. So this <coughs> resin I have never used before, so this is going to be the first time seeing it. But you're yeah. definitely going to be seeing me testing out this. We'll make a little well in the middle. What do you think? Management decision. Seven drops. Do you think? Oh, that'll be far too much. Let's see. Oh yeah. Let's probably say three is probably enough. One, way. two, three. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling at home now. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's amazing. Is it coming up in there? Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> These do wear a mask. Yeah. In a well ventilated area. Well ventilated area, wear a mask. I quite like the smell myself. <laughs> Don't do as I do, do as I say. So, let's make a little hole in the middle. And we're going to very carefully measure out the catalyst. Ah, that looks a bit right. <laughs> you just get it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is the remains of the bottle that came with my last tin of resin. I obviously haven't been using it enough. But if you put too much in, this stuff will go off very quickly. Do you have much working time with this, Jim? Um, I guess it depends how much of the the catalyst you put in. <laughs> I mean, I put I, I've I've done some, and you know it's still been soft a couple of hours later, and uh, other times I've been halfway through and it's been kind of stiffening up in me. Um, I suppose I should read the manufacturer's instructions at it some says point. Four percent. <laughs> And try not to get this resin falling onto your lathe bed. And if you do, get it off before it goes hard. It goes back to what I said earlier about it being extremely hard. You want me to get your cloth or anything? No, 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 no. <laughs> That would be far too intelligent. It goes on quite well. It's not it? too bad. It actually goes on quite nicely. Yeah, it does. And that's just getting worked in there. And we're just going to keep going up and down. Working it in, we've got a small knot hole up at the top here. I don't know if the camera is picking that up. Yep, it is. And we're just we're just going to pretend it's not there. We're just going to fill that up. If it causes me offence when it's finished, I'll make that the back of the lamp and drill the hole for the cable to go in there. There we go. We've got in the lace bed. That's excellent. Everything's running to everything's normal. I do think applying it like that is probably the best way right now. Absolutely. It's starting to look as if I've probably mixed up just about yeah, enough. Right. It's looking good. It's a bit on your bed there. You're good, yeah. Come here. going to do right let's see what we've got An 
Oh, that looks I amazing. I think that is adequately filled in. And yes, there's an excess there, but there's always going to be an excess there. And uh, not too much left over. No, you actually measured really well there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to chuck this in the bin along with these gloves. This is going to look really interesting. Just filming on my phone here because the camera just run out. Does this go off to dry now? This is going to go and be left for. I leave, as I said earlier, I leave it overnight. I'm not. Um, I'm not for for pushing it. It just goes, sits out. Leave it overnight at least, or until such time as I can. Get back to it and ready to go on with the rest of it. And uh, that's it. Out it goes. Okay. When we put once we put the uh, the resin in, I leave it to dry for twenty four hours. This has been a bit longer. This is absolutely fine. I'm now going to sand it back till I take the surface back to the back to the wood. I leave the indentations filled with resin. As I said before, this is a resin. This is a gel coat repair resin for boats, so it's pretty tough stuff. And if you have any little sharp pointed bits on here, it will cut your skin, it will injure you. So I choose to wear gloves because uh, I learnt this one the hard way. I like to go over the whole piece and just make sure that there's no deep gouges or scratches anywhere that I've that I've missed that I've failed to sand out. But this is all looking absolutely fine. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And there's nothing in the end yet. No, nope, that's looking good. Right, we'll now do 320 and 600. That's good, that's a horrible bit over. We'll get some Yorkshire grit in that, give it a buff up and we'll see what we've got. Gosh, you wouldn't know, you can't feel any of that. It no, just it's, feels it's, it's, really it's smooth. It's nice and smooth, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a nice finish. So. Oh, the good stuff. Yorkshire gloop. Gonna need to get yourself some microfine next. Yes, 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 yes. Uh -huh. right, let's take a clean cloth and see what we've got. It's nice you can see it starting to shine up now. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh no, it's great stuff for giving that final shine. Yeah, oh, that, I like that. This is going to look nice. Oh yes. Beautiful. That will start to get somewhere. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Finish I'm going to use is Mylan's friction polish. It does, doesn't it? I'm suddenly seeing your reflection in it as yeah. I know it's 
sure anybody with a bit of whip will find a much safer way to do this. Now, just to get your cable from out here into there. Now this has been cut slightly hollowed so that's going to sit flat. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill a hole down to the drill. I'm going to drill a hole from the outside through to the centre to let the cable in and then I'll show you how I finish off these holes neatly. I'm just going to take the, the fuzzy bits off there. Now this will work but I've <coughs> I feel that it's a bit unfinished and my solution to that is to go out and get these things which are actually eyes that they use in tents or awnings or things you get them in all sorts of size you know the, for, the, the eyes they put in for the lacing in tents um, you get them for all sorts of size from very very small up to enormous ones these I think are the smallest ones you get and what I do is I keep this half of them and I just throw the rest in the bin so, brass or something uh, yeah, well you get all you, you, you can get a uh, chrome finish you can get brass yeah, finish nice. you get all sorts of different finishes that's the one I use um, and the outer diameter in this and that drill hole are both nine millimeters it's an interference fit but the wood's quite soft so it doesn't really matter so you kind of hook the bump base under your arm like that you get something to persuade it in with and you get a bit of super glue uh, you try not to super glue the metal bit to your fingers, which does happen on a regular basis. And just a little dab of super glue there. Set that up there. It will kind of start in and then just. Oh, nice. And that, I think, is a nicer finish than just a, a raw hole in the wood. And that's it ready, ready for cabling. Brilliant. Another beautiful project, Jim. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, thanks very much, Jim, for letting us film all of this because um, I haven't seen any of this before. And hopefully it's given you some ideas, and especially with the gel coat. Um, there is so much you can do with that with voids and of course you don't need pressure or vacuum so it opens up some more doors for you so really we have decided today we're going to be doing another video so there should be another one following on from this and with something totally different again uh, yeah there'll be some pictures of both of these up after and then the third video will be coming very soon thanks very much for watching thank you RPM? Oh, no, that's the wrong way, that's going up, idiot. Oh, we could have had drama. Everybody <laughs> 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 shouting shit and bailing out his head. That's been in the cupboard. <laughs>